Brought to you by Proto Labs. Real parts, really fast. Custom metal, plastic, and liquid silicone rubber parts in as fast as one day. Thanks for inviting me here. Um, I'm a little nervous being the first speaker of a kind of amazing lineup, but um, we'll see what we can do. Um, so just to give you a quick intro about who I am, like mentioned, I'm a partner at an office called Family. We're a small design and architecture office in New York. Um, we do sort of a variety of projects. Um, it's a museum in Finland um, that basically encapsulated an old building that was out there already. Um, a project for the new museum that we actually did with Play Lab, which the two guys are here for a series of tents just on the Bowery. Um, for the Ideas Festival, which they've been holding every other year now. Um, and we've been working now with Kanye West for the past year or so, and the most recent thing we did with them was the, or with him, sorry, was the Ease of Stage that just finished touring a couple months ago. Um, so we have a pretty, I mean, we've been having a pretty interesting couple years, just a fairly eclectic scale of work and type of work. Um, but these ones here are, I'd say, typical in terms of their kind of client-based, service-based projects. Um, I think the reason I was invited here was to talk about particularly a project called Plus Pool, um, which for a host of reasons is, is very different than most of the other work we do. Um, and I was actually really excited about the object culture title of the conference just because for us this project is as much a product as it is a service, which I'll kind of get into later. Um, anyway, this is the project. Um, it's a plus-shaped pool, as you can see, a floating pool uh, for the East River. And I figured since it's the room more or less of designers, I wanted to try to, a new format for this presentation, which is breaking it up into two parts. Um, the first is really just describing what the project is. So as you can see, it's a floating water filtering public pool. Um, and the project started off with a realization that we had um, after living in New York for about six years, which it seems like a very, very obvious thing. Obviously, everybody that lives in New York knows this. But it, it took, at least me personally, a very long time to understand that this was actually water and not just you know, a band between Manhattan and Brooklyn. That you could actually, it was actually a natural resource, it was actually wet, it was something you could get into conceivably um, on those really hot days when you're sweating and drinking a beer by the water, it'd really be nice to step in, but it never really occurs to you that that's something that maybe would be possible. Um, what's interesting is that was very, very much possible about 100 years ago. Um, it was not only used for recreation, but actually used for literally just bathing. Um, a lot of the housing that was built back then didn't have proper plumbing, so people would literally clean themselves in the river. Obviously, once people started analyzing the health of the river, that kind of changed. And so today, obviously, this is much more common than you see people actually swimming. And the reason for this is that the, the city is decked out in CSOs. Uh, what a CSO is is a combined sewage outfall or overflow. Uh, what that really just means is whenever there's a big rainfall or more sewage, sewage gets dumped straight into the river. Um, and so this map is a DEC map showing kind of the allowable things you can do. Obviously, for example, surrounding Manhattan, you're not allowed to swim. I'm actually very surprised even you're allowed to fish. Um, but what we liked about the project, what we wanted to do was say, could you just pick sort of one point in the river, kind of carve out a small part and start cleaning the river? Um, obviously, to clean the entire river is a huge effort. It's actually really encouraging. The city is on a 50-year plan to clean the river. Um, granted, it was a 50-year plan that started almost 50 years ago, and I think has another 50 years ago. But at least there's kind of that direction heading in the city. Um, but you know, the thought was, could you just pick a spot? Could you pick a spot, bring people out to the water, clean the river, show people what it's like to actually touch and swim in real river water, um, kind of change the sort of psychology of the city and how you see the river that way. Um, the design itself is pretty straightforward. It's basically, or we think of it as kind of four pools stuck together in one. Um, it's a kid's pool, a sports area, a lounge area, a lap pool. Uh, the dimensions are 50 meters from end to end. So it's actually an Olympic-sized pool, um, four, four lanes in width. Um, you can also think of it as a full eight-lane pool that was sort of split in half, and one part was rotated into a plus. Um, but for us, it's kind of one thing that you can split it up and have everybody use it at once, but also open it up into this giant just pool for play, basically. Um, but I think for us, as the kind of initiating the idea, what's really exciting right now and the thing we're testing is the idea that the water actually gets filtered through the walls of the pool. Um, this is one of the very early sketches we did. Um, and to give you a sense, nobody on the core design team, me, Jeff, Archie, Juana, had before this any experience with pools, any experience with water filtration, any experience with 
what the hell this thing could or couldn't do. So when we came up with this idea, it was like, well, could you sort of recreate a big Brita? Could you treat the whole thing like a giant strainer and really just move water through layers? It kind of made sense in our mind. Um, each layer basically would take out smaller and smaller contaminants. And lucky for us, we actually, um, within a couple weeks of kind of launching this idea, we got a call from Arup, which is one of the largest engineering firms in the world. We did a feasibility report with them. Weirdly, the idea has legs. <laughs> so we started testing with them in 2011. This is the first test we did. All this is is bringing water up from the river into a tank. Each of these uh, columns basically holds a frame of material, um, kind of like the layers you saw. Um, this is obviously before it was being filtered, but you can see kind of the, the turbidity, the amount of stuff that's in the water um, when it first comes in. And with the help of Arup and with Columbia University, we actually set up a small water quality testing lab down at um, Pier 3 in Broken Bridge Park. Um, and again, we were being trained how to water quality test. We were kind of doing our version of science for about uh, 10 weeks down there. Um, and we tested 15 different parameters. Um, the three most important are the top three. You see the turbidity, which is really just how much stuff is in the water. It doesn't really tell you what kind of stuff. You just see whether it's full of stuff or not. Um, but it's a really quick indicator. Um, and then enterococci and fecal coliform are uh, basically shit. Um, and, and that's where the city and the state measures whether you're allowed to swim or not. Um, for example, here on the bottom right, fecal coliform is a particular kind of people shit, basically. Um, so this is a direct indicator of how much sewage is getting put into the river. Um, what this is showing is actually a, a single time frame of one body of water being filtered in our system. And what we were doing was just really testing the first layer of filtration out of three. So this column here is the water coming in. Um, and then as it moved through our really simple tank, we got very close to swimmable. We hadn't actually thought we'd get this close on our first trial. We just really wanted to prep it for the kind of more intense filtration. But what it told us was we were on the right track um, a few years ago, so we've been testing ever since. Um, we just built this floating deck over at Pier 40 in the Hudson River, which is called Float Lab. Um, each of these three tanks um, contains different cartridges of filtration that we can take in and out. We can try different materials. And then this water is also fed into an upland lab um, to test kind of more intense filtration as we do that. Um, it's just some photos of us launching it. Um, I think what's, what was really exciting for us is this is the first time um, about three or four years into the project where we actually built something physical that floated in the water. Um, all the tests before were on land. All the work before was in our computers, like most design is to a certain point. So this was really the challenge of going through our first round of permitting, going through our first round of fabrication. You know, how do we actually get stuff to float? How do we get stuff to float when you fill it with water? So all of these issues, this is us kind of, we actually built it, or it was, it was assembled over in Liberty Landing in Jersey. And we had it tugged all the way across the river, so that was actually a pretty fun ride. There's Archie there with a the camera. Um, and then as a parallel to this, what we were able to do was, um, because we're collecting so much data, and we have a couple instruments that are actually taking real-time data and just uploading it to the spreadsheet, um, we started working with Google, who helped us build uh, what we called the Plus Pool dashboard. Um, what it is is basically a real-time site that you can go. You can see the data as it changes every 15 minutes. And you, there's a slider where you can go back and check the history of the water quality. And the main reason we wanted to do this was um, to really, I think, connect people on a very simple level back to understanding what their water is. Um, most places, when you look at water quality data, even for us, we're doing it for a few years, is really, really confusing. Um, it's just a, a shit ton of numbers. So to be able to see, you know, just simply if the water was good, if the water was bad, 10, 10 days ago when it rained, how did it change the water, I think was really important for us. Um, just again, to get that step back to the water, even psychologically for the public. So that's basically what the project is. Part two is, is how are we doing this? Um, which I think even beyond, in a way, the actual technical side of it, for me, is really exciting because we're trying to do this in a new way for architecture, as a model for architecture, which we don't really see very often. Um, so the project started off, as most of these projects kind of do, with just three of us, um, and literally in a coffee shop, literally over a napkin sketch. Um, and with the help of Jeff and Archie at Play Lab, um, we basically just put out um, a website, a small book, and a poster um, and honestly, at this point, and this was 2011, 10, 11, um, this is as far as we knew. We had a design, we had an idea, we had no idea who to work with, who to talk to, what agencies in the city were involved. Um, so even on the back of this booklet, 
there's a list that says, you know, we're looking for help from naval architects, marine engineers, all sorts of people, about 20 different people. Um, what that turned into really quickly was a ton of press. Um, I think we um, inadvertently launched it kind of at the height of one of the stickiest summers. So everybody just saw this idea and thought it was a funny idea and an interesting idea. Um, and so within, like I said, within two weeks, we were actually getting a lot of calls. And luckily, oh, sorry, here's Jeff, one of my favorites, Basie, getting interviewed for a Chinese TV station. I have no idea what that says, but I'm sure it's good. Um, and then I think one of our highlights was last year we were nominated for um, Time Magazine's one of 25 best inventions of the year. Um, so it was really exciting for us just kind of get that validation what we're doing again was, was I think on the right track. Um, but I think more important the press, that basically turned into a lot of political support and a lot of private support around the city. Um, here is a selection of some of our advisors. Um, and then also um, the ability to basically talk to agencies around the city that really have no reason to talk to us without this project. Um, we've now built really good relationships with Parks and Rec, Health Department, DEP, DEC. Um, and that, the policy side, the bureaucratic side, is by far probably the most challenging part of this project because we're basically trying to change how the city even defines what their water is and how people can get into the water or not. Um, but that's actually been really exciting for us. And then finally, that allowed us to build um, our kind of core team of engineers, of scientists, and of designers to help push this forward. Um, One Nature, for example, is it's actually a local in Gowanus, um, an environmental consultant who's helping us with the permitting, but also making sure that our impact of the pool is, is we're basically impacting correctly and positively. Um, we launched two Kickstarters, um, one in 2011, one just last summer. Um, the first one, the goal was 25,000, and when we raised 40,000, uh, we actually hit our goal in about six days. The second one, um, we, we decided to up that to 250,000 and luckily surpassed it with 270,000. Um, and it turned out, I think, one of the largest civic crowdfunding projects in the world. Um, we were, I think, not only blown away by, I think, how many people contributed, by the, but by the fact that people were supporting a project that was still, quite frankly, very far away, certainly at this point, than being realized. You weren't paying your $25 and getting the product that was trying to be put on Kickstarter. You were just supporting something that had a long process to go. Um, and the, the, the core of that, basically, was that we said, how can we give back to all the people that are helping make this happen? What's the smallest kind of piece of the pool that people can have? And that was the pool tile. So we made um, the ability for everybody to put their name on a tile. You can, we're just milling out uh, tiles at a core end and actually sending people their very own tile when they donate. Um, we made it so there's three levels. So every person from $25 to $250. You can have your custom tile. You can be part of a group tile. And I think for us, it's really important that you, know, you could go to the pool on opening day and actually see your name. You can actually own a piece of New York, so to speak, but really that you can walk around and see all the people that contributed. Um, that's literally been the kind of base for this entire project is just the public support of this whole thing. Um, this is some of the selection of things that we get back. I think people sending us photos of the tiles that they make. Um, and what we noticed is we've been getting not only interest in New York, but actually interest around the world. Um, as we looked into it, uh, the project actually, or we realized that the project actually applies to about 90% of the world's largest cities. Basically, 90% of the world's largest cities have a very similar problem to New York has, how they treat their sewage, how they treat their water. Um, one of the first people was the mayor of Sydney actually tweeted at us, and friends from then, we started working with Arab counterparts in Sydney um, to to assess the feasibility of a pool there. Um, and so I think how we're looking at the pool now is actually New York is plus pool number one. After that, we have a filtration technology and we have a kind of model for how to develop it that can spread to other parts of the world. Um, and I think getting back to that issue of the, I guess, of the object culture and the product, um, like almost any design field, you know, architecture is a fairly, it's a service industry for the most part. A client comes to you with a request, with a budget, with a site, and you design something based on that brief. Um, you know, a kind of classic from the kind of client and funding the site to finally design, kind of encapsulating all that stuff. What we realized we were sort of doing was actually flipping this and putting design first. Um, oops, yeah. Um, literally a kind of design-driven process that as it moves along actually starts defining the team that's most appropriate for the design, starts defining the site that's most appropriate for the, for the design, starts finding the funding mechanisms, the development models that work for it, um, and eventually even influencing the policy of the city, which is something we hadn't really set out to do 
but in a weird way is essential for how we're doing this project, and weirdly the city has been open to that conversation. Um, and so I think seeing it as, or seeing architecture in a way almost as a product, I think for us is pretty interesting that you can put something out there and you have to find the market for it, or you see a market and you find a, you put a product out there and then figure out how to market to that market. And I think that's something that I've never seen personally architecture do. Um, it's certainly something we hadn't intended to do, but it's just because of the process we've been doing. Um, to give you a sense of where we are now, um, we are, I'd say the biggest milestone for this year is we're just about to, or we're hoping to nail down a site um, by the end of the year. We have two that we're looking at now. Um, and also taking the project to a much more legitimate, basically 501c3. We're opening for the 501c3, we're establishing a plus pool council, um, and basically start our first round of proper philanthropic fundraising, both an event in fall, um, and then basically from now until the end of the year. Um, but that's a huge milestone, not only in funding, but really um, the kind of capital that we need to develop the thing to construction. The hope um, is that in two summers, we'll have this thing in the water. And part of that is to align it with the next Olympics. Um, but that's basically it. Obviously, you can come find me or Jeff or Archie afterwards if you have any questions. Um, I guess that's about it. Thanks. Thank you.